Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. We are doing a test run on pouring a cannon out of gunmetal. Uh, I'm using the lost foam technique and I don't have any foam that thick, so I'm gluing together some, I think this is inch and a half blue board using Loctite spray adhesive. The reason for the test run is I need to do a test pour and then check the strength of the metal. I just tried sanding it instead of turning it. So here's a 60 grit sanding disc. The cannon should be weighted slightly to the back, and it is, because you have a, a screw back here to adjust the pitch on the, on the final mechanism. One foam cannon. So I have made a form of sorts, separate boxes with tabs to help with the alignment, so that when you put them together, they'll stay together. So this is going to sit in there like that. I'm putting the breech down because air bubbles are going to rise and I want the breech to be the absolute strongest part of this. So, A lot of times when you're doing lost foam molding, you just use regular sand. I don't actually have regular sand, I just have green sand. But I don't think it'll be an issue. We'll find out. So this is my first time doing lost foam. It does seem like if I just had regular dry sand and just dumped it around this, that would be super easy to do, but would it work? I guess the reason that this is a little different than a lot of lost foam castings people do is because I'm doing it vertically. There's going to be a fair amount of PSI on the bottom of that. So that loose sand might actually get just pushed out of the way by the molten metal. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it'll cool right away and that wouldn't be an issue. I packed this with green sand to make a pour spout for me. Yeah, careful so that it's not like wedged against the side because it's going to expand as it gets hotter. I don't want it to crack the crucible. I just realized I forgot to add my flux. My new draw spoon that's going to make that part so much easier. It may not have been entirely apparent in my last video, but skimming the dross was very difficult because my spoon was so short my hands were getting burnt. Well, 
I am really pushing it. That crucible is filled to the brim. All right, I'm gonna shut down for a minute, avoid the lead oxide fumes, and I'm gonna skim the dross. Hopefully I'll have a little extra room in there. Heat it up a little bit more, and then we will degas it and pour it. This is phosphor copper. Moment of truth. Well, I see a problem. Either I figured wrong or it really pushed that sand out because it did not come all the way up. Okay. This should have been about the top of the barrel and I mean all that metal is just down in the bottom. I sure hope the sand all pushed out. I hate to think that I figured the size that far off. It's a foot down. So my two foot cannon is one foot long. Not looking much like a cannon. Tell you what, it stinks. I don't really like that lost foam. So I learned something else. I'm knocking the sand off and right there, molten metal started pouring out. So the inside of that, look at that. The inside of that thing is still molten. So I'm gonna have to let this thing cool for a long time before I break it out of the mold. It's been in there for 15 minutes. I'm used to these small castings that just cool off so quickly, but I think it's pretty obvious that it did push out into the sand, but that's all right. Uh, this is still gonna give me the information that I want. This area that I've uncovered is cooling faster than it normally would, so I'm gonna take samples from the underside. That's where I'm gonna do my tensile strength tests. So I've put bricks all along the bottom of that. Thing's gonna boil and spray the heck out of me. Cool. I'm not used to dealing with uh, something that's so big. It just keeps staying hot. <laughs> Duh. So that time, I think I was over skimming a little bit because this has a lot of metal in it. Uh, it's quite heavy. And I took a piece of the of the slag and I cut it and you can see it's it's metal. Uh, so I definitely lost a few pounds there in uh, in slag. Just over 43 pounds, 19.6 kilos. My widest dimension on the pattern was about three and three quarters. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm four and a half. If you look closely at this thing, I have a smooth cylinder here and it looks like I've got a smooth cylinder all the way into here. And then I've got these 
fissures of metal that are thicker at the bottom. It's almost like they came out the bottom and then perforated up along the sides. See, there you can see I've got a smooth cylinder there, but the cylinder is much bigger than it's supposed to be. If it had stayed the size of the pattern, it would have then shrunk and been smaller. Um, instead, I am much larger than my pattern was by almost an inch. It's not a total loss. When I took it out of the sand, it was like this. That's where the metal was leaking out. So under here is where the, the metal cooled the slowest. So what I want to do is take a sample from this area down inside and see what my tensile strength is. And that means I am going to have to chop that, something like that. This turned out to be quite a challenge. First I used a cold chisel to take off some of the, uh, the ribs on the side, and then I tried cutting it with my bandsaw, but uh, it just wouldn't cut. So then I put it on the lathe, and I went through several different lathe tools trying to turn it down, just trying to get the sand off of the outside. I know I could use a grinder and about 50 cutting wheels after two hours, but I'm trying to avoid that. There's still sand mixed in with this casting. This is a real mess. So I can't cut it because it immediately dulls the, the cutters. So how do I cut this? Come on, you. You right there. How do I cut this? What, no answer? You're not gonna help? Ah. I tried using a grinding wheel just to clean up one area so that I could then part it off. But that didn't work either. I then thoroughly cleaned my lathe because all the grit from the grinder and the sand is the worst thing you can do to a lathe. Well, I have a bit of a crazy idea. It's something that I've done with aluminum before. It's just cut it with a circular saw. So I am going to uh, set this thing up and, and see if I can't uh, take a little metal off of it with a circular saw. Crazy as that may sound. I've got it set to cut about half an inch. That is a carbide tipped blade. It's very old and beat up. I just want to see if I, can, uh, if I can do anything with this. Got my eye protection on, I've got my ear protection on, and I'm going to have two hands with a death grip on the saw. So it did cut, and actually pretty well. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is up too high, I can't see what I'm doing. So I need to mount this some other way. I just have a little bit left right there. So I'm gonna see if I can cut through most of it with the bandsaw, and then I should be able to just break this thing off. Really pleased with this. I don't see any pores and the grain structure is tiny. I would have thought it being so big and cooling so slowly that I'd get big grains. It's dirty from the uh, cutting oil but those areas in the center you can actually see pretty uh, pretty nice looking fine grain. So I'm gonna cut that same way I just did. Circular saw, lots of noise and uh, I'll bring you back after that. It kind of looks like a, a log now, like tree bark. Here's what happens to a circular saw blade when you absolutely abuse it. I think there's still little hints of carbide left on those teeth, but they're almost all gone. And then uh, one of the teeth finally bent, and that blade is done. But uh, considering what I was doing with it, I don't think I'm going to file any complaints. <laughs> I use the belt sander to get the rest of the sand off. So that I can now put on the lathe.
Drilled some holes in it. The final diameter came out to 402 thousandths. Let's get this thing loaded. So what do we want here? I would love to get 50,000 PSI tensile strength and that would equate to about just under 3,000 PSI. So anything 2,500 and up I would be really happy with. Quite honestly I don't expect to get that. I'll be surprised if I get over 30,000 PSI. Let's see what we get. All right, that's 600, 7, 8, 9, 1,000, 11, 12. Ah, so kind of interesting. It did break in the middle. You can see the grain structure there. It's, it's linear. So here's how the math works on this thing. When you take that diameter, 402 thousandths, that's 201 radius, 0 0.201, and you do pi r squared, you get an area of 0.127 square inches. I held 1200 PSI. That equates to, it's 4.324 pounds per PSI. So that equals 5188. That only held half of that though. That's how much pressure the, the press was exerting on both sides. So divide that in half, this held 2,594 pounds. So it held 2,600 pounds, and then you divide it by the area. Divided by 0 0.127, 20,400. You know, that's actually not too bad. Shooting black powder, like the maximum chamber pressure you're going to get is about 27,000. I just need to make sure I have enough wall thickness there that it's going to be able to withstand that 27,000. 20,000 PSI. I can make a cannon out of that. I won't stand beside it when it shoots. So how do the commercial guys make this metal stronger? Because uh, this can definitely have a much higher tensile strength than I'm getting here. I think what they're doing is they melt it and pour it, then they're forging it. You know, they heat it to exactly the right temperature and they, they run it through presses and rollers and roll it out and that changes the grain structure as they work it and they end up with a much stronger final product. And that's just not something that I have the ability to do here. Now that said, neither did the old timers, you know? The guys that were doing this back in the year 1500, imagine that. They mined all this ore with a pickaxe and then smelted it, got copper, got tin, mixed them together, melted literally tons of it at a time, and poured it into molds and made cannons. And then they drilled the cannons out by hand. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have propane. They didn't have hydraulic presses and power saws and any of the stuff that, that we use. Hats off to them, man. It's amazing. But one thing I'm, I'm certain of is that they did not forge it. They casted it and that's what they got. So they probably had a similar tensile strength to what I'm getting. If someone out there knows different, I'd love to hear it. I turned down another sample and tested it off camera and got similar results. You can see that one fractured linearly again. Well, for those of you who are wondering, how is he going to separate the sand from that metal? That part's easy. You melt it. The sand will float to the top. You skim it off. The question is, what am I going to do as far as my next attempt? This metal is not as strong as I would like, and I'm concerned that this cannon is, is going to be terrifying to shoot. Um, that said, I still kind of want to do it. <laughs> what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to what I know with the mold. I'm going to make a wooden split pattern, and I'm going to mold this thing with a regular green sand pour. I'll ram it really tight and I think I'll do just fine like that. Then I'm gonna drill out the cannon. I'm probably gonna keep the bore smaller just for safety. I'll drill it out at like probably a three quarter inch bore. I'll shoot it and I'll have some fun with it. And then when I'm done, I think I will drill it out bigger, an inch and a half, maybe even two. And I'm going to press in a sleeve of 4140 that I know will hold anything that I can put in there and then I don't have to worry about the cannon exploding. I'll still have the cannon to, to play with in the future and I can shoot it with people around and not worry about anyone uh, in danger. Before I put the sleeve in there, I'll probably only shoot it with, uh, with nobody in line of sight of the cannon, myself included. I'll light a fuse and get behind a barricade and let it fire. Uh, I'll let the cameras watch it, but I'm not going to uh, watch it myself, just in case. So what do you guys think? Is that a good plan? I think that's what I'm going to do unless someone convinces me otherwise. This has been a lot of work. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time, hopefully with something a little more substantial at the end.